everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna be doing another wandering uh, ring pour. I'm sorry, wandering uh, straight pour. And I do have some colors here that, uh, this color is kind of a custom blend. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the sparkle in it, but there are some, um, some piggies in there. I had some leftover paints and kind of put them together. So I can't tell you exactly what's in that, but I believe it's dioxazine purple and some crescendo from this little piggy. That's my color. They named it for me because I'm a musician. Um, and I have uh, for my background slash base coat, phthalo blue from Liquitex Basics. Um, I also have some phthalo green here the uh, Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold from uh, Deco Art. And then this is Crescendo, just a straight Crescendo. So these two colors here, this is the Thalo Blue, this is the Thalo Green. And to it, I have added some of the Americana Decor Satin Enamels in Pure White. Um, it's about 50-50 um, of the satin enamels and the other paint. These paints have been mixed. One part paint to two parts Floetrol. And then uh, that is thinned until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. Um, which one am I going to show you? I guess the gold will be best. This is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. And it's making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. The pigment, uh, I mixed the pigment with some Josonia gloss varnish. Mixed the pigment in with that, and then I added some Floetrol. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're working with. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, exact paint brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course, how to do the technique, all of the things that can't fit on a card. This is a picture of the painting in that particular uh, video. This box here contains a tip for that technique and here at the bottom you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette or you can build off of those colors. And there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in the cup. I need to make sure that I have enough of this background color to react with the other paints. So I put about two ounces in there. The rest is going on my canvas. Tis my base coat. And I forgot to cover my edges first. Oh, that was a very naughty thing to do. Um, I'm going to remedy that. Okay, the edges are covered. Let's uh, lay down this base coat. The reason that I cover the edges is because the Floetrol and my thin mix can um, kind of get a little too stretched out on those edges and then you don't get the coverage that you want. So I try to be proactive, troubleshoot before there's trouble, cover up those edges. And then the base coat is to help the paint slide around more easily. My base coat is down, I'm gonna give it a quick torch, pop any bubbles that might be in that base coat because I don't want them popping up through my pour. So this is why I use a color that is in my painting. If I were to use a white base coat, 
and I don't have any white in my painting and then white little white cells start popping up. As those bubbles come up, it brings the paint with it. That works to your benefit when you're using a cell maker. But if you don't want those cells in there, those little tiny pinhead cells, then use a color that's in your painting and torch it first. Okay, checking my consistencies here. Everything looking good. Always check your consistency before adding your paint to your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Okay. So I'm going to start with the green. Pouring from up high and allowing it to sink. And then I'm going to do the crescendo. And my blue. And gold. And this very pretty purple blend whatever it may be called. All right. And I think, do I have some left? Okay, I do have a little bit left in here and I'm just gonna cover up what has come to the top. Give all of those paints a chance to react. Okay, once again, quick torch of the base coat. Okay, let's make a mess, shall we? So I'm just going to pour it straight. Oh wait, I was gonna do a laundry. That's right, now I remember. I'm gonna do something unconventional here because I wanted this to be more wandering. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little juice on these corners. Never hurts. The corners always seem to give the most trouble, so I like to put extra juice there. Okay, well, I forgot what I was meaning to do, and so I kind of <laughs> botched that a little bit, but that's okay. So now I'm going to torch And as these cells pop up, it's going to bring paint with it. And because these deco art paints have a hydrophobic effect, uh, they push away the other paint and then the cells expand and you get some really cool stuff happening.
Okay, normally I would let this sit and develop, but I don't really think I need to. Um, that gold is going to take over anyway. It's a very strong cell maker, so I'm just going to go ahead and tilt this out. Same concept even on these big canvases, bring the weight of the paint back to center before you change direction, as much as possible anyway. Okay, and again, bringing it back to center. And then I'm gonna wander on down to this side. I don't want to lose too much of that purple, but I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to keep. I'm going to try. I don't know. Okay. And when you're using the weight of your paint, you can get quite a bit of control. Over your tilting process. Okay, well, I was able to keep some of that purple. Now I'm just trying to recenter the weight of the paint so as it's drying, it's got the best opportunities to dry evenly. Okay, I am not going to torch this anymore. Um, I'm just gonna let this sit and see what happens. Uh, back in a few. Okay, here it is. Um, I seem to have lost some of that crescendo. It may have just blended in there. I can see a bit of it. Um, I did kind of mess up my intentions. I wasn't thinking clearly, but I'm not mad at it. I wish you could see that purple. It's so pretty, the shimmer in that. But there is some very pretty stuff happening. So, we do like these colors together. But this is what, what we've got. Hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you click that bell if you are subscribed, if you would like to receive notifications of when I put up new uploads, you got to click the bell. And you will find in the description box links to uh, my affiliates and you'll find coupon codes there uh, for deco art. If you want to get your hands on some of these paints, if you enter through those affiliate links, anything that you purchase off of those websites, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. You will find the link to my website, ginadeluca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And the cards are also on Amazon. Join us on Patreon. I have some exclusive content there. We have uh, live Q&A Zooms. And also, you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. But that is what we have.
Okay. Well, that's it for today for me, y'all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.